Well, welcome everybody. I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order. If you could all please rise, please, for the invocation. Riley Grindell with Gulf Shore Church will lead us in prayer. Good evening. Good evening. If you all would join me, please. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for this wonderful and beautiful place that we get to call home. Lord, I thank you for these leaders that have stepped forward to help to guide this community and for their service. And I ask that your hand be upon them tonight to give them wisdom and understanding, discernment and knowledge. And Lord, most of all, that you give them divine strategies of how to lead this community and what they need to do so that we can be the best that we can possibly be. For Lord, we just ask all of these things in your name. In Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Councilman Forbes, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Carumba. Here. Councilman DeWitt. Here. Councilwoman Carr. Here. Mayor Simmons. Here. Councilman O'Flynn. Here. Councilman Gibson. Here. Councilman Forbes. Here. Well, good evening, everybody. Nice to see you folks. Thanks for being here. We're going to start with public comment on agenda items. Members of the public that would like to speak, please come forward at this time. Good evening. Hi. I haven't been in here in a long time, so forgive me if I uh, don't follow the procedure. Um, I'm here to talk about the PACE Act, I guess you guys are going to discuss that? Yes, ma'am. Um, we have it in all, almost all the communities all around us. Um, I'm here because most of my friends, we represent the families that own homes in the older neighborhoods in Bonita, uh, homes that were built in the 70s, 80s, and, and 90s. And um, this program would really, really help those of us that live in those, those homes. My air conditioning unit is from 1981. It's a nine-seer. I don't have equity in my home to get a home equity line, a credit as some people might have to do to get a new AC unit. unit. I'm not going to put on a credit card, so I deal with it. Today, my house won't go below 81 because it's so hot out because we have an eddy rain. So I'm not alone. I have a lot of friends, actually, that would like to get new air conditioning units right now. That's five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. This ad valorem tax on the tax bill makes so much sense. Um, like I said, you know, we're all homeowners of older homes because that was what was affordable for us where we were, are in our careers. And at some point, we're probably going to move out of those homes and upgrade to a nicer home. This goes with the property, and that's very appealing. It stays in the ad valorem tax until it's paid off. So if it's what, an air conditioning unit, it's maybe five, six years. So we pay a little bit more in our escrow than we pay to the banks, because most of us have mortgages. That's why we don't have equity in our homes. I think we really, really need to consider, you need to consider passing this. It's going to help a lot of people, a lot of people in my boat, the working people, people with young families, people that just don't have the money hanging around. Five, $6,000 is a lot of money when you're, when you're younger and, and trying to make your way to retirement, <laughs> the goal. So I just ask, I know there was a few people I, I'd, I think uh, not for this PACE Act. Um, you hear the commercial, Bruno Air, that's great, whatever. But then you realize that Charlotte has it, Collier has it, City of Fort Myers has it, City of Cape Coral has it. Why can't we have it? So that's all. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for being here. Thank you for your thoughts. Other members of the public that would like to speak? <clears throat> Hello, Rick. How are hey, you? Hey, good evening, You're Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm glad you got the budget final. Uh, I don't think you need any more money. From my reading through all that stuff, you got millions and millions of dollars, and I don't think you need to raise the price of electricity, the cost of living in Bonita to all the people at one time. That's, it doesn't seem necessary to me. You got enough money to paint City Hall. Uh, you don't need to take my money anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Other members of the public that would like to speak?
Councilwoman Simons, how are you? I'm um, very well, thank you. I, I, I'd like to ask you to give me a little personal privilege on the time because I'd like to present these flowers to Audrey Vance for our last city council meeting. I want to thank you, Audrey. Oh, very pretty. Thank you. Welcome. They're from Heaven Sent Flowers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Audrey wrote me a very nice note when I left council and I saved it and I'll always remember her and her expertise. We're gonna miss your institutional knowledge, uh, your quick wit. Not so much all the talking, but then that's me too. So we would girls love to gab. So um, I need your phone number and your address. Give it to me later, please. But thank you, Audrey. Thank you very much. We'll see you at the party. Okay. All right, a couple things here I'm here for. Um, and I didn't find the one thing I wanted to ask you about, and that was the, um, put that thing on hold about the affordable housing, the impact fee credits and all that with um, Habitat for Humanity. Is that tonight? Is that on here? Because I couldn't find it. On the, okay. Yeah. You've got an affordable housing study coming up, and I think it would just be appropriate as you decide what your programs are going to be for that to do it one policy for everybody, you know, work it out the way you're going to work it out. I wouldn't approve that now until you find out what you're doing. That's just my little comment there. Of course, we want Antonia Carrera back. Um, fertilizer ordinance, hey, that's my baby mayor. Make it stronger, make it better, um, enforce it stronger. Also, we had these signs, Matt Feeney, that we were gonna put out during the time of the fertilizer ban, which is from June until September. No nitrogen, no phosphorus, right? Because it washes all into the water and helps feed the algae. So. Um, I hope you'll consult me on that. We took a long time making that right. And also Dave Licardi, uh, who's in Public Works, was fantastic. He worked with DEP, and he really helped on that. And I actually won a statewide award on that issue. Okay, uh, oh, $1,000. You understand all that? I hope everybody votes for the $1,000 for EBABM, because that's our bay. And their funding has been cut from DEP and South Florida Water Management. We're going to Fort Myers Beach, Fort Myers, Estero, us guys, uh, FGCU, the Estero Bay Agency on Bay Management was part of a settlement agreement uh, for FGCU being built in the DRGR. And so Ellen Peterson, Hapahatchee, Ellen Peterson, um, was the one who successfully fought that fight and created the EBABM to look out for Estero Bay. And then uh, I really like us to look at our streetlights in town and what's going on with the FPL. This is probably not the time to do this, but since it's on the agenda, we still have poles laying around in my neighborhood, and we still have like three poles for one thing. I mean, Rick Steinmeier, I think in 2006, came up to this podium and said, Council, I want you to ask FPL to remove the old poles since they put the new ones in. Well, that was the old poles, then the middle ones are there, and now the third one's there. It just looks horrible for our streetscape. Plus the old stuff laying around all the time. Um, and then finally, I don't know if anybody wants to change your mind. One of you people that voted yes on this outsourcing thing, I think it's just really bad for city council morale for the city attorney to be outsourcing. That says nothing about Gray Robinson, fine firm, but it's going to end up costing you a lot more money. They pay $700,000 a year in Naples for their attorney services. They're 22,000 people, less than us, and they're not in-house. So. It, good attorneys, no, no doubt, but it ends up costing a lot more. And you're going to find this out. And I really think for the morale and the creating the camaraderie and teamwork in town, if one of you could change your vote and bring it back for reconsideration, sorry, Gray Robinson, you got enough work. Um, I really think it's very important. So, thank you, my dears. Appreciate it. Thank you, Audrey. I'm going to run home because I got stuff I got to cook in. So, um, Give me your phone number. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Other members of the public that would like to speak, please come forward at this time. Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move along now to the uh, consent agenda. Council, what's your pleasure? I'd like to pull one, um, the one on the pace. I don't know which okay. one it is. Yeah, I saw that. That's on the, we get a L. lot of them there. L. 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 Okay, yeah, that's just, L. Just that one. <clears throat> And I'd like to pull R, nothing to do with Antonio, but for a different reason. I just wanted to discuss R. 
Any others? Motion to approve the rest? So motion to second. Okay. Uh, there's been a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda, except for L and R. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Caramba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Okay, Amy on L. Yeah, I just pulled it because I voted against the, you know, in initiating that policy because I have concerns about um, the whole pro process there. And just to be consistent, I want to pull it because I'm going to vote against it. Um, and I know everybody's going to outvote me, but that's fine. Like I said, I've been on an island before. Mm -hmm. It's liberating. It's mm -hmm. no, no. But look, when it it, it no, is what I, it is, and no, we're not. No, I. I we're know, not seven twins up here, I and I appreciate issue. your no, thoughts. I continue to have the yes. issues. It's not different. Sure. And your issues are. Well, I You know, there, I'm not going to debate it because it's very complex, and I feel that if we were going to do this, that we need to explore all kinds of as, uh, aspects to this, not only for its asset-based funding, you know, from a financial point of view of how how it's going to work. In, when you run into problems, uh, I think it creates some issues in regard to sales. Um, it also might encourage people to make uh, renovations when they're not, they don't have a cost benefit uh, 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 advantage to it. I mean, there's lots of issues. It's not just one little thing. And it's a, it's a very comp, and I also fundamentally don't agree with having a private financing entity be supported through the public system. You know, which is, is essentially runs as a, um, a special taxing district in a way because it comes in as a line item and having uh, Lee County collect uh, a financing payment. And I know that they pay Lee County for that, so, th you know, to sort of cover the administrative costs. And I don't, I didn't explore whether Lee County's making money on them or, or anything. I mean, it's like a hundred things that need to be considered that we didn't do because it's complex. It's not as straightforward as people. But I, I'm very sympathetic to people who want to do renovations and have limited financial, financing abilities. Um, and you know, the whole thing about the truth in lending, I mean, they, they, there's been some improvements to the program because there have been some problems in the past. So on and on and on and on. And I just think that I didn't feel comfortable uh, approving of it. I didn't, I'm gonna vote no again. I have nothing against these individual companies that are in here you know, they gave us information. As far as I can tell, they're decent companies, but that's totally apart from the whole policy here. And I, and I'm just because it's all over Florida doesn't mean that, they did, that it was right then or it's right for us. So maybe I'm being overprotective, you know, big brother, but that's the way I feel. Okay. Thank you. Other thoughts? Motion to approve. Okay, there's been a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Further discussion? <laughs> Roll call, please. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? No. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, I pulled R. This is to approve the award to Antonio for consulting services for government access cable channel BTV98 pursuant to RFP 18012. And like I said, this it's, it's almost, um, I didn't pull it for the, any reason other than to say there's a lot of new neighborhoods. Well, there's neighborhoods in town that are getting new cable services. Like for example, in Bonita Bay, we've gone from Comcast Xfinity to Hotwire, I believe it is. And I think, Amy, I think your neighborhood has made, made a switch. And I'm not sure how many other neighborhoods. So my only thought is here, and I know it, it's really nothing to do internal here, um, but you, you've got a large segment of Bonita Springs all of a sudden that can't watch cable access TV because the new providers do not offer that. So, you know, if we could drill down a little further on that, I mean, we're... Pretty soon, you know, we're, we're just um, a few neighborhoods, you know, probably <laughs> we're going to, I mean, literally, if you take Bonita Bay and, and Pelican Landing, I mean, I don't know what that is. What is it? 25, 30% of the city mm -hmm. right now because of new cable providers. So I don't know what we do there, but I just wanted to pull it to make that point. I know Laura was, has been looking into it, but maybe if, if Arlene and Matt, if you could look into that and kind of give us an update 
I'm not expecting a, yeah. an answer here, but my, we, we, my, we my, do these wonderful productions. Yeah. Our citizens well, I just should want, be able to see I them. I just want to support that. And uh, Pelican Landing, because we've been on Hotwire, it's got to be our, our second year already. It's been a long time. And we've been working with the representatives there, and they keep saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, but yet it never comes. And, and I agree, as, as more and more people switch over, we want to have that representation so that they can get it on the TV. You can still get it on your computer, and that's how my husband watches us, and, uh, and that's what we do. But it's better to just have it on your community channel. Right. Um, so maybe we can all get together as a city, if we agree, to try to ask Hotwire to expedite that transition to a community channel, because we're doing it individually. I'm sure your community is doing it, and who else? I think Summit is in some places, too. I don't know if they have a community channel or not. Um, but I, I would be very much in favor of that if we can put some kind of word out. Right. Um, we can do it. We can check in with the communications department and see what information they have back, and then maybe we could look at some outreach to these um, hot wire summit. We can get inventory of them and um, look mm -hmm. at maybe doing an official letter to them to ask how they can better partner with us on right. right. I thought we were doing that because I know Hunter's Ridge switched and they. Yes. And we there just was some outreach to them that. as well, yeah. but that was with CenturyLink. No, no, they no outfit, but yeah. But that was a point that they did CenturyLink, and CenturyLink delivered the community channel right within six or eight months or something. And it, it's been well over a year for our community. I know it's, they're in other communities too. Great. So I don't want to belabor it, but I did want to make that point. So thank you very much. Um, and I'll I'll motion to approve. Second. And there's a second. Is there further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Carr. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. <coughs> okay, we're now going to move on to proclamations and presentations. Um, we, if we could have um, the Hispanic um, heritage folks that are with us this evening, please. I'm sorry, this is uh, Fiorella Papa Petro. I probably did not say that right. Did I? Okay. All right. Yeah. Don't ask me to say it again, though. No, I do. It sounds yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a beautiful name. It is. But I just this is very mellifluous. Hi. Good evening. How are you? <coughs> Wonderful. Very nice to see you. Thank you for being with us. And this is a certificate of recognition uh, proudly presented. Thank you for your outreach, your involvement, your dedication to the Hispanic community for Hispanic Heritage Month. September 15th to October 15th, 2018, signed Mayor Peter Simmons, September 17th, 2018. Congratulations, would you like to? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for this recognition for me and for always support to the Hispanic community in the Bionita Spring City. Uh, in Telediario News in Spanish, uh, we will um, working for uh, to continue information the community for the news and the good news for the city. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wonderful. You're very welcome. Thank you. Would you Thank like to you. Say a word? No, you're okay. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you think, for all you did. I think one more picture. Yeah, 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 the official one. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other official icon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. He's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything you do for our community. Okay, Mayor and Council Member items uh, under Roman numeral eight. Item A is to discuss Bonita Springs 
fertilizer ordinance considering red tide, har harmful algae blooms, and drift macroalgae and Lake Okeechobee discharge algae blooms. And I brought this forward. This is green sheet 1809-0333. Um, Audrey, I don't know if you want to kick us off here. I know we have, obviously we have a fertilizer ordinance. I think it's a very strong one, a very good one. Um, and I guess maybe my bottom line is Having it, look, at everybody knows what's going on in the news with our water situation. Been involved in a lot of meetings outside of the city of Bonita Springs. Had one on the East Coast that unfortunately I could not make. But uh, the mayors of Lee County, mayors around the state, a, lo a lot of people, everybody on this council are involved with this issue. And it's kind of like um, I was needling uh, Prez Belusky earlier uh, because we've had some concerns on Imperial about speeding and you know, what good, it, what's a, what good is it to have a speed limit if you're not going to enforce it? So I guess that I would make that point to say, what good is our fertilizer ordinance if we're not going to enforce it? Uh, not worth the paper it's written on. And I don't want to get too deep or too personal here. Uh, but I would like to have a discussion on where we are, where we aren't, what we have going on, what we don't have going on. Because I can just say as somebody that's out and about and running and walking and biking and doing these things in the heat that I probably shouldn't be doing. I've personally witnessed some things probably that I shouldn't in terms of fertilizers. And I just wanted to have this discussion. And I guess Arlene, from a legal point of view, maybe do you, what are your thoughts on this, where we are, where we aren't? And then I'd like to kind of have a discussion. Well, uh, again, it's a good ordinance, for the record, Audrey Vance, city attorney. It's a, a very good ordinance, I think. I mean, we modeled it after the ordinances that Sanibel adopted. Um, former council member Simons was correct. This is an ordinance that was very assertive. Now, once we adopted it, similar to some other stuff we did around the state of Florida, uh, the legislature did do a preemption. So playing around with the ordinance is probably not the most e effective thing to do. Um, but what you could do is, you know, better enforcement of the ordinance, which could come from community policing, could also come from uh, neighborhood services. More important than just doing enforcement is making sure people understand that there is the ordinance. Um, and just because you saw somebody um, putting something on their ground uh, during the rainy season doesn't necessarily, if it was a low nitrogen, low phosphorus, that's perfectly fine. It's the nitrogen and phosphorus that we don't want into our water system. And when you go up to the second floor, you'll see in the public works, they have a nice swamp thing poster. And um, again, you, there are, is signage that could be put up. Uh, neighborhood services can treat this as a target during the rainy season. Then the only other thing is if, if you feel it's necessary, we can also, uh, during the state of emergency, council just readopted it. Um, if you feel that it's necessary, we can extend um, into the dry season, but on seven-day increments, uh, the ban. But I don't know necessarily if that's necessary because, again, we're going into dry season. I think the main thing is public education because education, people not doing something in the first place is much better than dealing with enforcement. And that's something that uh, the city manager can address or the assistant city manager. Right. No, absolutely. And uh, like you said, no, I, uh, my, my personal observations have not been somebody putting down the fertilizer. It's seeing what it's doing to the water. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, Matt, what are your thoughts here? Well, I think Audrey touched on it, that there's a preemption now and to, to reopen this would not be advisable. Is that correct? Yes, that's what I said. Uh, that probably not play with the ordinance, but look at enforcement yeah. and look at education. Components. And that's where I am, yeah. you know, and I'm one of seven up here, but that's where I am. And I don't know if council has thoughts. Um, so with that in mind, Matt, uh, council, what are your thoughts? Amy, my bell. <laughs> my bell. Yeah, where's my the bell? bell. Where's yeah, the ring bell? the bell. <laughs> no, I do want to comment on this because I too uh, do a lot of walking and all that stuff. And I observe things that troubled me and I was I'm so glad that you provided the ordinance because obviously I hadn't read it but I looked at the exemptions so the things that bothered me are exempted the way I read this um, and that is when you have newly 
planted kinds of things. So every gated community within Bonita Springs or maybe others have an annual planting program. And my belief is, is that they are planted with fertilizer. Now, I don't know if it's low nitrogen or, you know, or low phosphorus, but I recommend that uh, we do outreach to every gated community, to every CDD in Bonita Springs, and inform them about the nuances of those instances when they can use fertilizer and when they can't. Um, like, I don't want to throw my community under the bus, but we had to recently replant a large area with trees and shrubs because of damage from Irma. And I don't know whether they did it with fertilizer or not, but according to this, they could, you know, because that's a newly planted area and it was quite a large area. Um, and I assume that our CDD follows the rules, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, so I think that we really need to do outreach for specific things. So there's certain areas, certainly every annual program all over the city needs to be reinforced about what is allowed and not allowed. Um. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Laura? Uh, I want to echo what Audrey and Amy have said, is that the real key is education, because mm -hmm. I'm sure your community follows the rules, but do they really know the rules? Right. And I would make it really user-friendly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so I only buy things that have pictures that, for directions, <laughs> I'm sorry, but just like really big pictures, no. <laughs> With, you know, I'm just saying. If you take a look at the poster upstairs, it's pretty graphic. About yeah. Well, what but let's put it everywhere. Let's mm -hmm. like reproduce it. <coughs> So it's, I mean, it's, share it. Yeah. I haven't, you know, yeah. I mean, I've seen it, but it's not in my community. Mm -hmm. okay. And I know my community obeys all rules that they're told of that they're aware of. I hope. Arlene? At, at staff level, we can work with our neighborhood services department mm -hmm. to do more outreach with the community um, associations, with the management companies as well, Correct. so that we can get um, the proper information to them as well. So, so I'm, not how, I'm not sure how much is this an individual uh, owner issue you know maybe it's a big issue with them but I think it's probably the managed communities where it could be an issue because they do it so regularly mm -hmm. and they pay to do it so I think we should take a look at it well I want to point out neighborhood services does require uh, that does require the certification and it's a reciprocity thing so uh, certification is required by the professional landscapers so they have to have one person who is certified and they mm -hmm. uh, don't know if it's annual or biannual, like every two years, but they, they do make sure that they're up to date on their education. Um, and presumably if they're educated, then if they're <laughs> knowingly violating, that's much worse, of course, mm -hmm. than act, you know just being dumb mm -hmm. um, if it's out there. So I mean, there is that component with the professional mm -hmm. landscapers. The bigger concern, I believe, is where people have control of their own yards or lawn services mm -hmm. that might be more mom and pop mm -hmm. oriented but I mean outreach can be done to mm -hmm. every nobody is hurt by outreach mm -hmm. yeah. right council anything else yeah Fred <clears throat> well yeah, Amy was talking about the exemption the biggest exemption is agriculture I'm not talking about in the I'm talking about the that's real right, world so. and mm -hmm. that's where a lot most of this a lot of this stuff is coming from I think we ought to uh, what, what Mayor Simmons when he's meeting with uh, Kevin Ruane and Randy and the rest of them we ought to write a big letter for this area to Florida League of Cities and say we want you to make a priority in your uh, lobbying <coughs> as the legislative body to pass laws to crack crack down and squeeze down on what you can do as a, in the agriculture business because that is much bigger than what the city of Benita or mm -hmm. Sanibel is causing. Okay, so I don't know that we necessarily even need a vote on this, but I think, do, is this is this well, a good direction? I, I think it's a good direction, but I'm just going to echo in. I wasn't going to say anything, but then Fred brought up about the agricultural. I mean, one of the other ones is the golf courses. 
I mean, if you're going to pick mm -hmm. on one, you got to pick on all. Oh, right. So, I mean, right. you know, in Bonita Springs alone, yeah, there's no, there's not a lot of agriculture anymore in Bonita Springs. There's more golf courses than there is ag. So, I mean, I'm just saying, if we're going to look at one, we got to look at them all. Well, just I, because, I can't disagree with you on that. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, absolutely. I know a majority of you guys, excluding me, live in a gated community, so <laughs> yeah, it's I'm hard. Not a, I'm not a golfer, don't worry about it. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, I don't want oh, you guys to get in trouble for your, yeah. no? your own communities. But, I mean, those are those I, are. I, I think, not to exempt. belabor the conversation, but I think the point he's making is, Agriculture's got, and it's not just on fertilizer. Right. They get a it. big exemption. Big. Golf mm -hmm. courses don't have exemptions. Right. They got to right. follow the rules. Yeah, they have. Yeah. Right. So, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in defense of our personal golf courses, oh. we are Audubon certified, so I don't yeah. think. Which we, Audubon? Yeah. <laughs> which Audubon? I don't know. The one uh, that, that counts. That like and, and you have And you have it for Benita Bay, yeah. too. Wait, which Audubon? Audubon? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I think Nothing else story. Flynn's summation of what I said is right on target that's they have an exemption not to follow almost any of the major right. restrictions right and that i think that day needs to be reeled in including everything with to do with mitigation yeah well i'm saying they both got to follow some sort of standard because here it shows it's the uh, florida right to farm act yeah. and have to follow that whereas the golf courts have to file one from 2007. yeah right. okay Okay. okay. Oh, whatever you say, Greg. It's everybody. Yeah. Is that Outreach good? is the best. We'll make, we'll make everybody our enemy. Okay. With big picture. We won't discriminate. Huh? Great. Thank you, Council, for that. Um, item B is to ratify a letter that I signed to include the City of Bonita Springs in the attached September 11th, 2018 letter to the South Florida Water Management District, strongly urging the district to not adopt proposed changes to the Caloosahatchee. Now, obviously, this is the meeting that I was not able to get over to last week that I had hoped to. Um, and my understanding is, in fact, and I'll be speaking to NBC2 tomorrow about this, but it is. It's about the water releases, and um, we get too much water when we don't need it, and we don't get enough water when we do need it. So um, that is basically the thrust of this. We're going to continue to beat this drum. We're going to continue to join other mayors and other counties to beat this drum. It's a gubernatorial issue right now, in case anybody hasn't noticed, and I'm not trying to be glib or cute there, but it's, uh, it's in a lot of ways, when I'm out there and about, this is all anybody wants to talk about because uh, this affects the hotels, it affects the tourism, it affects the people coming over from Europe, it affects the restaurants, it affects everything and everybody. And if we don't rein this in and get a handle on it, and you know, look, this isn't to poke fun at history, but this happened in response to a tragedy that happened 100 years ago. Well, folks, I'd like to suggest there is a tragedy going on right now and it's going on way too long. Is it loss of human life that's gonna get our attention? Or is it loss of thousands, possibly millions of fish? Is that not getting our attention? So I'm not here to lecture, I'm just letting everybody know that we continue to beat this drum. And what, at, at what price? At what price here does the Army Corps of Engineers not get involved and play politics and say, okay, that's in the House committee right now, but we don't have enough votes to get it out of committee, but we got the votes on the Senate side. Look, we've been hearing that for way too long. And in case you haven't noticed some of the gubernatorial commercials, uh, you know, we've been hearing it way too long. What we need to do uh, uh, is continue to beat the drum, but it's like I said, we have to get the senators and congressmen and women from Idaho and Hawaii and Oklahoma to care about this. We've got the Florida delegation, but we really need to expand our efforts. We need to elect leadership that's serious about it. We need to look at who's on what committee and who's on what board. And if they're ignoring us, they need to be replaced. And I'll just leave it there. I'll leave it at that. Um, and Arlene? Oh, Mayor, we, d we do need a vote confirming your letter signature. Yeah, so, okay. So, 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 
Oh, yes. Second. I just have one comment. Um, the way the green sheet was written, it said we are opposed to their to their suggestion that it's 400 uh, cubic. Uh, feet, what is it? So, uh, right. Cubic feet or whatever. And the way, the best way to explain it, we get too much when we don't need well, it and well, we don't I, get enough. I, we don't want to say, don't, because that's going in the right direction. I think the current one is like 300, or if I remember correctly. So this is increase. Is that true? So this is like 100 more than I, what? I, I assume we're following Kevin or Wayne's lead on this. Correct. Yes. Right. That so, is correct. Uh, right. what? To weigh in or? The draft yeah, rules on the second page of the green sheet. Yeah, we're not going to stop. Yeah. yeah, weigh in, <laughs> yeah. Matt. Yeah, yeah. no. Um, I, I did talk to um, James Evans, who's the environmental director over mm -hmm. at Sanibel, and this issue is, yes, they are increasing mm -hmm. the amount of flow, but uh, it's kind of like the mayor said. It's too little, too little in the dry season uh, compared to what historically mm -hmm. would have been there. And so uh, the, the number that the folks uh, out on the Sanibel side or in, in the environmental community are recommending is much higher. I think it's about 750. Right. And so instead of doing something that, that's, you know, just a, a partial step, really their position is, look, if you're going to change it, change it to the, the correct rate mm -hmm. uh, or, or what they believe to be the correct rate, which is, you know, almost double what it's being recommended to move. Well, that was the point that I was making. We should say go to the the number that we think it would be effective rather than just say because if we say don't do anything they could just leave it at 300 right correct uh, but i guess this it, there's a little more to this where it's, it's tied to the c43 reservoir coming mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. online in about two years and and performance um measures associated with it so but the letter the letter yeah, is the letter. correct the actual i mean in other words the letter is is what we want. Is what we want. So I think there's just a slight disconnect between the language of this item and the letter. Right. We're ratifying the letter, not this language. The letter as the well, letter that's okay. attached that Peter would assign, uh, along with many, many other, mm -hmm. led by Kevin and everybody else, mm -hmm. has this nuance in it. Right. It mm -hmm. talks about the 720 versus the 400. Okay. Well, this yeah. this is the one he's going to sign. This one right here. He in the signed way. it already, probably. Okay. Yeah. Right? I just the well, way it was <laughs> written was just right. like. I want a stronger letter. That's right. what I'm trying to get to. So if we have a stronger letter, I'm good right. for that. Sure. Thank okay. you, Amy, very much. Thank you, Council. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor Simmons? Aye. <clears throat> Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Thank you, everybody. Item C is the scheduling of the budget retreat and the November 21st uh, City Council meeting because of Thanksgiving. Arlene? Yes, um, we wanted to take the opportunity to talk with Council and set a date for the retreat. Um, we also wanted to just advise Council that the uh, November 21st meeting does fall the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so we just wanted to confirm everyone's availability or, or alternatively, if we set the budget retreat the week before, we could advertise it as a City Council meeting, so if there's any items that we need to address, you could have the ability to vote on those items as well. Um, or the week after Thanksgiving, whichever one. But we wanted to s make sure first that w what direction council would like and what um, availabilities you had for that okay. retreat. Great, thanks. Council, what's your pleasure? I'd rather not meet at, uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So, so if you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I do, I do the cooking. I don't know about the rest of you guys. Well, we'll be over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what time? I'd almost what like time? to say what's the <laughs> pleasure of the staff. Yeah. yeah, Arlene, what do you recommend? Um, but not the day before, not the week. No, well. <laughs> what we were looking to consider would be the, the week prior to Thanksgiving week or the week, there's the, the last week of November as well. That what happens is Thursday is November 1st. That's why we're, we're in the scheduling right. of the first and the third. Mm -hmm. So um, the week, any, any time that we, I don't know if there's a better day of the week that's better for everybody. I know, I don't know if Councilman Gibson, if Mondays are still better for you during the day. Um, we would plan on the majority of the day for that retreat. We'd like to bring you through each of the departments and each of those long-range planning goals. I'm okay the week of the 12th, except there's an MPO meeting on uh, executive committee meeting on the 14th. Well, we could do it like, yeah. Just to throw a right, yeah, no, absolutely. And Mike, are Monday still good for you, like the 19th? The 12th, is, the 12th is Veterans Day. Oh, Veterans Day. Oh, 12th Veterans. is Veterans Day. What about the 19th? That's good. For Mike, I, um, or no? 
It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Hey, I'm probably working six days a week that time of year anyway. So. Oh. It'll give you a good break. Yeah. I, I, yeah I like I said, just well, to throw out dates. Well, well, the nineteenth. The nineteenth is is the week of Thanksgiving, just so you're aware. But that's Monday, though. It's Monday, though. Yeah, but we're shopping because we're cooking. Are oh, you shopping? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I, I would say the week before, the week after. All right, fine. So the, the thir there's Tuesday the 13th. Sorry. I'm not booked yet. Okay. Yeah, 13th is The 13th is good. Lucky 13. Night. Okay. Sure. So when is that, 9 o'clock or something? 9 o'clock, yes. Is it 9? Is that, okay. 13th. Of November. And where will that be? Here at okay. City Council. Okay, so we're going to retreat right to City Hall, <laughs> yeah, huh? Right. Yes. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> take a field trip over to the rec center. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. November 13th at 9. Now, that will be the retreat only, or will this act as our we, if, council if, meeting if as be, well? What we can do is Notice see it. how pending items right, come along, right. and if need be, we can advertise it as a council meeting that way you can have any voting items you need to address okay will that be at 9 a.m 9 a.m okay got it okay wonderful thank you arlene for that um item d discuss request from habitat for humanity to utilize the city's banked water and sewer credits from bonita springs utilities as well as developing a deferral program for city impact fees. Uh, this is green sheet 18090329. And I know Kitty Green is here and Vince, and you know, we, we've had some discussions and outreach, but um, let's, let's discuss it. Council, what's your pleasure here? I'd like to make a motion to approve consistent with what's being requested, which is, as I understand it, for two years on the impact fees, somewhere between five and eight houses, and uh, consistent with that, the same with the uh, credits for the water and sewer. Second that. Okay. Council, is there further discussion? Uh, I, oh, go, sorry, go yeah, ahead. Okay. No, I know I, I'm going to vote in favor of this, but I do think we need to, uh, because of the timeliness of the request, I think we need to have some kind of a discussion about the policy that we have in regard to the use of those credits, the utility credits, because I know we've accumulated over a series of years for, from various things, and I think we ought to understand what we're trying to do with them. And I think from what my understanding for the use of the credits were, were that we wanted to encourage, um, what's the word, like individual units that were spread around the city. Um, rather than whole communities. Now, I don't know where I got that idea, but I thought that was part of the thinking there. So if we go ahead with this, I would like staff to, to give us an update on what we're doing and, and, and ho hopefully we'll get a consensus from the council of what our policy should be in, in its use because Habitat, there'll be other, hopefully other entities that want to do um, affordable housing that might ask for the same thing. Fred? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And no, then no, Laura, no, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, go ahead. No, no. Yeah, Laura, please. You Laura, were next. Ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I echo Amy, but I also echo um, uh, former Councilwoman Martha Simmons in that we don't have all the information. I support one part, but I don't support the second part. And so if it's one motion, I'm going to vote against it. But I, I'm really for what the intent is, but I just think it's too murky i just we can do them one at a time which do you like which part well, do you like why don't we see what fred has to say i like uh, that we give them the credits but again amy brings a really good point up how are these credits being because they are finite right mm -hmm. so are we really spreading them out are we treating them equally to other entities right. and so that wasn't but i i, I love the program but I also feel that they should pay the, the building fees upon the sale, uh, upon when they get the permit. Oh, we'll let Fred talk. So, and we can okay, yeah, Fred? Yeah, I, I, actually I have three concerns. I could go along with this because it's only four or five homes. But we have in our comp plan 
and we, we try, I'm not saying we do it perfectly, but we try to say that any development that's going in must be compatible with the surroundings. I want to see habitat, if they're going into a neighborhood with, say, scattered lots, that whatever's there, unless they're just terrible homes, that they got to have homes, they got to restyle their outside to comply with what's there so it doesn't stand out like a thumb. Second of all, I still feel that the one thing that we need to get some, something work with them differently, and that is you build a home, the new owners get it, 10, 15 years later they sell it at the market price, then in order to replace that lost inventory, we gotta build another one. And we don't have that much land, so I think we need to work something out with them it's workable for them but also addresses our concerns i think we're in a little different position than perhaps fort myers or lehigh acres where they have especially lehigh they got lots of land we unless we want to put this all the way down bonita beach road we don't have as much land but i do think compatibility and all that i can i could go along with this i'd really like to wait to hear what margaret wurzel has to say next month truthfully, but uh, if it's that important, I could go on for four or five homes. Yeah, Kitty and Vince are here. Well, time, time frame wise, guys and girls, um, it'd be nice to have it tonight, I think. I, but what's the time frame that you're looking at here? If we were to, just based on at our next meeting, you know. Kitty Green, for the record, um, if you will agree with my request to be retroact, to apply them retroactively, then you can wait till next month. Um, we've got to move forward because we're, we won't, we've got to get our permits now, so. Okay, okay, thank you, Kitty. Mm -hmm. Just I, to address can it. I, can I make one uh, other comment? Absolutely. Um, I heard what the former councilwoman said about the waiting for the study, um, but I would point out that you all have a copy of the attainable housing uh, report that was done just a couple of months ago by the Florida Housing Coalition. And one of the recommendations they make is that impact fees is a way to ameliorate the costs of housing. Um, in fact, they go so far as to recommend, you know, reducing the impact fees. We're only asking for them to be deferred. So, just saying, thank you. Thank you, Kitty. No, I, I do want to uh, reiterate what Kitty said because I did attend that housing conference at, well, that was sponsored by uh, the Horizon Council, and I have their uh, this report that was, she's referring to, and that's exactly what they said. And in our conversations with Margaret Wurzel, um, she reiterated the same procedures, you know, the choices that one has. I don't think we're going to have anything new come out of that report that hasn't already been discussed. We just have to decide which are good for us compared to other communities. And, and the deferral of the impact fees was a very, they felt that was one of the, the areas where we could really be effective because they are expensive. Uh, I mean, what are, you, you said you had some figures on, yeah, on the nine, impact fees? Approximately 9,000 for the single family home for road impact fees. Mm -hmm. So we're basically uh, helping to the uh, count of four, six, seven, no, 15, 15 or $16,000 we're, we're granting to have affordable housing. And I, under, and I appreciate the, the comments that Fred had in regard to sustainability. I'm not exactly sure how we could work that because they are, I mean, they can sell their home. They do have first option, uh, Habitat does, mm -hmm. uh, so that if they don't, if they sell it sometime near the time that they purchased it, the appreciation, the market value should be relatively still in line with affordable housing. But if they do it 20 years later, then that uh, affordable housing, that market value would probably not still be mm -hmm. affordable. So that's that's what you're talking about. and. I'm not sure how, unless you have somebody that doesn't, I mean, one of the things they talked about in the, in the study was not to own the, the land, but just have the people own the, house, the building on it, and that helps to keep um, the level of the housing within a, uh, an area that would be affordable. But I mean, we, that, that could be out of the discussion with, with uh, Margaret, but again, I'm not sure that's right. where we want to go. These are mm -hmm. questions, but these two things are good. and. Again, I do think it's good that we should have a policy, 
but for the number of houses we're talking about right now, we might as, I think we should go ahead with this. Well, uh, the reason I would, uh, Fred, can I just? Oh, no, I just wanted to say, I do think it's important mm -hmm. that the homes that are being built mm -hmm. are compatible mm -hmm. with what is around them. And I can say I've seen examples where they are not, mm -hmm. not. And if, and if you know what, this, if you had a, if you lived in a development that had a certain level of homes, and they built two or three of these, you wouldn't be real happy about. It. Or you might not care, but your neighbors might. Mm -hmm. that, those things do matter. So I think we need to. That needs to be fine-tuned. Okay, great. Peter. Yeah, I think. Um, a lot of us have had concerns about landscaping and aesthetics, and I think Fred's touching on that. Uh, I think there has been some receptivity with respect to that, so I'm comfortable of kind of taking this step. Now, the one reason I wouldn't wait is if anybody has a track record, it's Habitat for Humanity. They've, they've right. been around for decades. Right. Um, the issue of affordable slash attainable is much more amorphous. I mean, we're even defining what the heck it mm -hmm. is is going to take a lot of time mm -hmm. so that's why i wouldn't wait to hold it up for that um the other thing i would say is i think it's important for people to know this that our crunch is in the general fund our crunch is not in the impact fee fund right we, we're, we're scraping bottom in the general fund we've got a lot in terms of balance sheet reserves in the impact fee fund it's another reason why i'm comfortable with it also the last point is this is well trodden ground in collier county and in Cape Coral, and I'd like to move ahead with it and actually have Habitat come and say, look, this is what works for us mm -hmm. in terms of, have them do a little legwork mm -hmm. in terms of what works for them based on the Cape or Collier or some combination mm -hmm. of that. And I'm hopeful that uh, going forward, we're gonna see, if we take this step forward, we're gonna see uh, concerns addressed with respect to aesthetics and landscaping and such. I'd rather take that positive step forward rather than not, so. Council, further discussion? There's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion at all? Are we gonna split you it or split? are we voting well, as Well, how did you want to, what, what, what do you think, what was your con what did I'll you vote for one, but I will not support two, so if it's one vote, uh, you know, well, I'm gonna we'll be no. Vote. Well, let's split it so you can vote. I'll the take way them one at a time. All right, so my, I split my motion uh, to first uh, not repeat the whole thing, but have it address one, okay. second. which is the uh, BSU credits. Second. second. Okay. okay. So there's been a motion and a second for approval on the BSU credits. Mm -hmm. Further discussion on that? Roll call, please. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilman Karumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman McCarr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Okay, now the second part. Well, the second is um, uh, with respect to number two, which is the impact fees. I think there's a modest amount of money, and they're asking for a deferral, not asking to have them waived. Um, this did come up in the context of when we put the new impact fees in, uh, so I think it's consistent with that. So I would move to approve second. Uh, two. Yeah. Okay. Um, on that, though, if we do ever switch to going to square footage based impact fees, uh, would this still apply or would it be kicked well, out? Well, for now, we're doing it for what they're asking, which is. I know. I'm just years. saying if we, if we approve this the way it is, would it change if we change to square footage? It shouldn't. No, it should be grandfathered in, is the way I would think. Right, John? Well, we're just making a decision for what she's asking for, yeah. which I believe is. Well, two, I, two I know, but the whole point of going to square footage is to help out affordable housing, Understood. too. So it would be kind of like getting two benefits instead of just yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, I think future councils can do whatever they want. I mean, if somebody is in a current year and they've acted reliance on it, it's one thing. But I don't think we can bind council on this anymore. We can bind on impact fees forever. Mm -hmm. So I think my but, answer but is- But somebody could hold the house for 20, 30 years. Th that's those houses. In other words, th those houses- uh -huh, yes. Right, but I think Mike's asking future no, I, building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we switch yeah. to no. square footage, yeah. oh, would oh, it still be deferred? No. Would it still be deferred, or would it be doable? You know, no, up front? I, I think the short answer to that is we could do whatever we want, but we wouldn't jeopardize what's been granted, which would be five to eight houses for two years. Right. Five to yeah. eight. Well, That's I, I what think it says here. I don't think this is just for the five to eight houses. I think we're asking for any any time they build one, that we defer. Because it says the impact fees. Two years. 
This is for this year, isn't it? This is year. They, year. The request is for two years. Two years. Two years. years. I think five, and five to eight houses per year. Yeah. And it's written. Which I think is what I said. Yeah. Well, because I know they asked to make both programs permanent, so I, I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if we were doing the permanent or. I, I believe it's five to eight houses for two years. Okay. And hopefully it'll work or we'll continue or maybe we'll have a better mousetrap. And is that, Arlene, it's five to what I understand seven is that houses for two years? asking for you to consider yeah. it for these programs that they have in place for these homes for these two years. They had asked in a consideration the letter if you wanted to consider making it a permanent program down the road. But their ask, as far as I understand, is for their two fiscal years, the one, start, right. one we're currently in and next one. Okay. Okay. Great. No, that's a great, that's important that's clarification. So that's my motion. Thank you. Okay, so the motion second. to approve in a second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. everything you're doing, <laughs> Kitty and Vince. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Okay, we're going to move on to a request of $1,000 for 2019 operations of a sterile bay agency for bay management. And this is Councilman Forbes, green sheet 1809-0339. Fred. Yeah, bas basically Martha kind of brought it up again, but it's just to provide a little bit of money to help the sterile bay management be able to operate because they... They actually, they're getting free space and free uh, staff from the Regional Planning Council. But as you know, the Regional Planning Council's budget is tighter than ours. And so it was put in $1,000. So moved. Okay. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Further discussion? I, I just, Amy? I just want to make a comment. I know that in the, in the write-up they talked about the, the other uh, entities that they're doing outreach for. Um, could we just have a report mm. on that, you know, whether they were successful, okay. so that we yeah. know that for next year that right. that we're not just an outlier? Yes, we okay. can ask. And, and if it turns out that they don't, they're not responsive. The other people, we might consider the our council doing outreach for them, so that all the everyone that's affected would right. pay their fair share. Yes, mm -hmm. they okay. identified uh, to us that they were going to be asking a right. Stero, FGCU, Lee County, Fort Myers, and Fort Myers Correct. Beach, but they had not confirmed Correct. the acceptance right. of those. But you we know. can ask for a report. All right, good. Thank okay. you. And we've also going to be asking for a final report on operations and an update okay. as well as part of our con contributing. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank okay. you. So there's been a motion to approve and a second. Is there further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Karumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Okay, dynamite. Um, item nine. And do you have anything, Arlene and Matt? No? Do you have anything before we move on? Oh, no. No, okay. This is the second reading and public hearing of the following ordinances, and public comment is allowed. Audrey. Thank you. Um, we have two ordinances. They're on the same affidavit of publication. I'm going to read both title blocks into the record because they are on the both. I have reviewed the affidavit of publication on file with the city clerk, and it is uh, legally <coughs> sufficient. Uh, the first ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Bonita Springs amending Bonita Springs Code Section 34-94 related to the Art in Public Places program, providing for additional members to the Art in Public Places Advisory Board, establishing quorum criteria providing for conflicts, severability, codification, Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Uh, that will be the first item. We'll do a public hearing in a minute. The second ordinance is, and this is a continuation of um, a, an ordinance, but it was um, advertised, and this is an ordinance of the City of Benita Springs amending ordinance number 00-08, adjusting the rate of the Florida Power and Light Company non-exclusive electric utility franchise providing for payments to the city of Benita Springs and providing for an effective date. Uh, both of these ordinances are second reading. At this time, if you'll do the Art in Public Places program, uh, this ordinance makes modification to a very limited section, uh, just to section 34-94, changing from seven to 11 members with the quorum remaining the same and with nine um, general voting members uh, as, as to their composition. Um, additional information could be provided to you by Nicole Perino. So moved. 
Second. second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Further discussion? And public, okay, so thank you for that. And public comment, I apologize. Are there members of the public here that would like to speak on this? Okay, seeing none, roll call, please. Well, I, I just had Mike. One, one question, actually not really pertaining to this, but being as you could keep the quorum at four going to 11, mm. what if it's a seven member board, could it be dropped down to three? You can have smaller quorums. Um, obviously you can't for city council because we have a charter requirement. But you can have for regular um, advisory boards, you can have larger boards and smaller quorum requirements. In this particular case, I believe because of the school teachers involved and the participation might not be everybody, but they did want to be inclusive of everybody, that was the reason to go to the lower quorum. Because I just know sometimes it's hard to get that fourth person you, at some of the uh, mm -hmm. advisory boards. That we could bring that back if there's a consideration for a certain advisory board to do that. You do currently have the subcommittees of the special events committee that have a quorum of three as well, the mm -hmm. holiday in the park, yeah. celebrate Benita and yeah. Fourth of July. So it could be brought back as a resolution. Yeah, yeah this committee though uh, specifically said they wanted to maintain the four uh, because they do have, we do, they do have a budget where they buy art. So I, I would not be in favor of, of lowering it to three. Yeah, I wasn't asking for this yeah, one. I was just uh, yeah, inquiring no. about others. But they specifically asked for four. I was at that meeting when they decided they wanted to go to 11 because they have this embarrassment of, of volunteers. Uh, and they're all great. They had a hard time even deciding which one to put on. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess the only other point I was going to make, and Nicole, if, I don't know if I have this exactly right, but is this one of the committees that you have to do by ordinance rather than Correct, so because is, the is, Art and Public Places Board was established by uh, ordinance uh -huh. and not by resolution, so it does have to be changed by so ordinance. So my question is, should we consider going to the, uh, the way that most of the new ones, so we don't have to have an ordinance every time you change there, it? You could repeal the ordinance. Yeah, and then just put in, establish it by resolution. I, I don't know if that would be useful from an operational I, point I, of view. I believe the history of that is at one point in time, that committee had a very large sum of money assigned oh, okay. to it and so it was adopted by mm -hmm. ordinance and there was specific mm -hmm. criteria for committee mm -hmm. members and right. that some of that's been a change through resolution but um, because there was such a large and also the fact that there was opportunities for public private partnership and purchasing mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. um, with, with the master plan and the master plan was adopted by resolution so yeah. originally there was a little bit more um, detail to that committee that that's why it was a little bit different well I, I'm just asking the question so if you want to kick it around and say no let's leave it the way it is or whether just for because we have to advertise this if we ever want to change it again right that's uh, correct yeah you, right so and I and I thought Nicole had said that you had changed the, the city had changed the policy that n new committees would always go by resolution well right? most of the newer committees have gone by resolution right. because they don't have the same requirements mm -hmm. that Arlene was Mm -hmm. talking about okay. they don't have their own master plans they don't have l larger sums of money that they can use to to p make purchases and things like that so that's why it was had a little more teeth to it being an ordinance I mean I don't have any feeling I just I'm asking the question so if you come back and say you it was good like this it's fine with me so okay okay council did, did we move it or? Uh, yeah we did there's been a motion in a second and there's no public comment. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on council? And we're keeping them two together, correct? Oh. No, no. Oh, oh, good. Okay, so we're voting on A, 9A. Yep. Right. A, correct. <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilwoman Karumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Okay, great. Um, item B. I thank you. The item I've read it, title block into the record. Charlotte Miller and Patrick Bryan are here from Florida Power and Light. Uh, should you have any questions as to the ordinance, uh, Mr. Bryan was very kind in allowing me to keep the same dates, so I did not need to adjust it based on the continuance. Um, so the same, you have the same draft you saw previously. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to help you. Okay. Council, what's your pleasure? So move. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there further discussion on council before we go to public comment? Yeah, I'd love to hear, because I know how to, I think I know how the vote's going to go. So rather than just kind of repeat votes constantly. Um, when this came up, I asked for it to be deferred because I said <clears throat> I was looking for what are the members of council's views are of the fact that we're scraping bottom on a general fund 
and that if we have things like, for example, in South Dean or Quinn, where we need to allocate money uh, for uh, FEMA mitigation, which is in either one or two in the FEMA mitigation, where exactly is the view of where we're going to get that money? To me, this is not an issue of who's for taxes, who's against taxes. Obviously, everyone's against taxes. The question I have is, what's our way forward with respect to it? Uh, and that's the only reason why I was for the mill rate. Uh, I'm not speaking for Greg and Amy. I, I imagine they felt the same way. And that's the, that's the only reason I would be for this. So I guess my question is, of those who are against it, please tell me I'm wrong that we don't have an issue, or tell me how you're going to solve it other than selling a bamboo property. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, I'm concerned we're going to be sitting here in March and we're going to be in the second tier of the FEMA mitigation money and we're going to have a situation where we're not going to be ready to dance because we're not going to have the funding availability. So to me it's not just a vote on whether you're for taxes or not. Uh, and to me it's please, you don't have to do it tonight, but let's have a discussion on what your way forward is. Is it to borrow millions of dollars? Is that what it is? I don't know. Can I follow up on that? Yeah, absolutely. I just want to uh, kind of echo the same thing. I mean, tonight we just, I know it's not a lot of money, but tonight we just gave $1,000 to an Estero Bay thing that we really needed it to do, but we didn't plan for that. It wasn't in the budget. We need to, when these things come up, we need to act on them. And like Peter said, not only in March, when it comes up to uh, the second tier, I know Maybe that at least three or four of us are going to go to Tallahassee sometime in March and ask for some wants. And again, they're going to need matching funds. Where's those funds coming from? Without robbing Peter to pay Paul. And, uh, <coughs> and, and just things come up. You know, Last year, if you remember, we had an issue with the AC in this place that we didn't plan on, that we don't have the money for. Where are we going to get those things that just pop up? We don't have it in the CIP to, to do certain things. Right. And as things come up, we want to make the city better than it is today. Beautiful, whatever it may be. Fix it up, beautiful, have different things. That costs money. And again, the positive with this is, in my opinion, it sunsets. You know, I, I know Mike's made comments before about taxes and, and stuff, and so have you, Mr. Mayor. This is something that's going to sunset. We, we talked about the $6 million that we're going to get back from FEMA hmm. someday. This is going to sunset. I know that was the big thing that when, when we brought up uh, the millage. Oh, once the millage goes up, it never comes back down. This will go away unless we need the money, unless something goes on where we can extend it. But it already has a sunset provision in it already. So we're just asking really for a Band-Aid, the way I look at it, because it's going to go away. So. But I think we've done all the talking. I'm looking for others to explain yeah. where I think the money is going to come from. Or tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I'd love to be told I'm wrong that, you know, when the FEMA money comes up, we, we actually you know here's where the money is. Council, it's your pleasure, Mike. Well, I, I mean, I, I think if we need money to hold us over until the FEMA money comes in, then maybe we need to borrow. But this, to me, is like tapping your parents whenever you're low on money instead of doing the, you know, the right thing and pulling yourself up and, and getting the money yourself instead of, you know, borrowing it from, from your parents or other relatives. So, I mean, I think, you know, we need to make the hard decision. If, if we really need money, then maybe we need to borrow it until things are a little bit better. We get the money back from FEMA, and then we pay it off. But, I mean, to me, we're just asking the taxpayers to give us more money in the meantime. And, yeah, it may sunset, but I don't know. It, it's, to, to me, it's, it just doesn't seem like the right way to go about it. So oh, that's so why I'm voting it. And this is nothing against Florida Power and Light, but, you know, we're getting egged and prodded and, Every single meeting here, we have to relive a vote that happened how many meetings ago? So let's relive it. Where are the numbers? Let's go through the numbers. Where's Ann? Let's have the discussion. Let's go through it right now. I'm not going to get bait and switched every single meeting on a vote that happened a month ago. So let's have it. Let's have the discussion. Are we out of money, Ann, or do we have money? Do we need to borrow money, or do we need to increase taxes? Let's call it what it is. Hmm. We are projected to tap into our reserves uh, for this fiscal year, to get through this fiscal year. We do not know when the FEMA money will be coming. Um, the budget that was just- And how much money are we talking about? Six to seven million dollars. But again, it needs to go through that FEMA process to make sure that they're going to approve everything that we submitted. 
um, which there were a lot, lot of compliance and documentation that was required for that. So. Right. And we got a newspaper here that writes it from a minority point of view. I've had those discussions, right? Uh, they bemoaned the fact that we didn't increase taxes. They were short on the votes, but they got the majority of the article. So let's continue to have the hard discussions. What do we want to talk about here for dollars and cents? Do we want to keep talking about this vote, meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting? Or do we want to put an end to it and move uh, forward? What do we want to do? Well, I've, I'd like to discuss it because we have Let's it, discuss you know, We've been I, discussing I, it for six no, months. We have Let's not. keep discussing Excuse it. Excuse me, Mayor. We have not. Amy, you were on the short end of the vote. No. Okay? All right. But I let's, think if we're going to prod and poke and belittle council members for no, how they no voted. One is belittling anybody. Excuse me. No one is belittling, belittling any council member. A question was posed that if we are not going to be raising revenue, which we had in, in the a guise of a, a Florida Power and Light, and that we are going to have to come up with matching funds for things that we prioritize and think are important. The question was, what are we going to do when we need the money? And Ann could get up and say, you look at, we have all the figures here. Not only do we start with an unassigned balance of zero, we've already increased that by 45,000, I think, unless you included that, for the DPZ on the downtown. Didn't we do that the last mo moment? We did $1,000. Um, you know, if we, can, if we can say we're never going to change any of the expenditures going forward, that's one thing. But you're still not going to come up with, you know, you know, half a million dollars or whatever we need for the matching funds. So the question is, if you want to, uh, Mike Gibson said we're going to borrow. So let's talk about, do we want to borrow in order to overcome this kind of crunch that we're facing? And even into, in the next fiscal budget, fis fiscal year, if you look at the numbers, I think the unassigned balance is a couple hundred, a couple hundred thousand. A thousand. So what's going to happen as we add the DPZ, we add a little bit of here, we add a little bit here, that couple hundred thousand dollars is going to be less than that, not only for this fiscal year, for the next fiscal year. So we're, we're, our crunch is going to last for more than a, a, a month or two months or three months. It's going to be a couple, 18 months problem. So, and that's why the, the sunset, I think, would help because by the time that works itself out, we'll be in a better position. But no one's suggesting that anybody who voted the other way is bad. It's just a different point of view. I, I agree. Right? My, that's my so, point exactly. But the exactly. question is, Mayor, what's the plan? What is your plan? Yeah, that's the question. What's nope. your plan? Just to let it ride out, or what? Well, well I, Laura, go ahead. I'm sorry, but we must remember that originally the IRS was only going to be temporary. Our income tax was only going to be temporary, and then it was going to disappear, and it hasn't, and it's gone up and down. And I echo Mike here in that. Let's see what's going on. Let's. Let's get out of the way and let people build. Let them develop along our comp plan, but let's stop putting implement, you know, impediments in people's way and taxes increasing. Let's see what goes. We are doing phenomenal in this city. The economy is coming back, so let's sit back. Can't we come back and raise this issue at another time if we're desperate? Or we can borrow money. And then we can do that. But I honestly don't think we're going to borrow. And I'm sorry. I do see the glass half full versus half empty. But I believe this city is percolating. It's happening. And we just need to get out of the way of the people that want to make it make more money. And that's how we'll get our money. Let, let the builders and the, you know, the taxes from the new businesses pay for it versus the folks that are living here. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. But that, that's, that's not a short-term solution. Even no, it is. A no, solution. No, no, it isn't, because building takes a lot longer than a year and a half. There's a difference of opinion. Yeah. Let's respect yeah. the difference of opinion. There's a difference of opinion. Let's respect it. Fred? Well, here's, here's what I'm personally thinking. I know it's tight. <clears throat> In fact, I was one of the ones that was saying it was tight. 
I'm going to go along with not doing anything this year to see what happens. Now, if let's assume we get lucky with the uh, legislative initiatives and we get some money there and we get, uh, we need to come up with money on FEMA, some of these matches, that can be handled for the most part the following fiscal year. If this doesn't work this year, then we're, I think we'll have to do something next year. I don't want to do something, but I, we may be trapped into it. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. That's right. Counts? Yes, Greg. I just one quick, quick question for Ann. Um, when you say we're dipping into reserves, how much are we dipping into reserves this year? So about, the, for the, hypothetically, yeah. possibly. It's What's it projected? It's about 400,000. All right, and, and, and I'm trying what, to. What does that mean? I don't understand. What, what do you mean with dipping into reserves? Well, but, our, our $5.1 million, which is a, a million dollars for disaster and, right. and $4.1 million for operating. We don't have, we won't start the next fiscal year. We will not That's start. That's the disaster that. reserve. That's not the disaster general fund reserve. And, and operating. Right. Within the general fund. Right. Mm -hmm. So the general fund is at zero. Well, that's what that's what I'm getting at. It's, that's it's, why, it's that's actually, why well, the way I'm understanding right now. it, it's actually right. a negative 400,000. Right. right. We're dipping into right. those reserves. Correct. So we need to restore those reserves um, in well, the You're FI. talking about, a, an, I'm sorry, but just to have the conversation. You're talking about an emergency reserve and a hurricane reserve. Yeah. Some of us are talking about something else, which is the fact that, I mean, your green sheet, the third one today, uh -huh. has zero as expected general fund unallocated balance, right. uh, unassigned fund balance. Right. So I just want to make that clear. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Right now, with, with what we're bringing in and what we're spending, right. we're at zero or are we at negative? We're, we're at zero unassigned fund balance, and we've dipped into those reserves which we need to replenish. Right, I understand that. But then next year, we don't know what our unassigned fund balance is. It could be zero again. That's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Very easily be zero right. if we keep doing what we're doing. Okay. And as Fred said, we can then bring it back up again. What would the 1% get us? Um, for, for a year, it's about 700,000. And so for a partial year, which would be, this year would be, I think the most that we'd be able to have would be about 10 months. It'd be about 583,000. And if we did need money for a match, could we do inner uh, fund loans to ourselves? Uh, no, we, we cannot do an inner fund loan and gain budgetary authority or spending authority. An inner fund loan can only be done when you have a temporary cash flow issue like um, well say, say if we were going to borrow money but we needed the money right now could we take it out of one of our other funds until we got the money from the loan yeah. no N not no not not for a not to have something that hasn't already been budgeted if we're paying for something that has not been budgeted uh, does not have an identified funding source for it then we could not do an inner fund loan but but could we Everything not? Everything that's funding. <laughs> it's so not, vague. Thanks. We not, Fred? Could we not borrow from the emergency reserve for 90 days, which is what I think it would take to get money, the kind of money we want, and create a long-term loan and all that? From a standpoint of a fund, having the loan be the funding source? Yeah. Because you're only talking about maybe 60, 90 days before you'd have a loan. really need to look you, you still are you still are spending some money for which you do not have the funding source approved now if the loan's been approved and it's just a short-term timing when it's going to be paid out that potentially could be but that's a very dangerous position to be in because basically you would be committing to spend money for which you do not have a funding source in place did Julie tell us that if we're borrowing out of the general fund based on ad valorem, we have to go to the taxpayers for a vote? That's what she said, yes, correct. The general obligation. General yes. obligation, so it's not gonna happen overnight. Oh. If you have to get a referendum, you would probably, normally what governments do is- Referendum. They, yeah. well, they try to avoid the referendum, so you could do some type of characterization of borrowing if it's under a year or if it's certain um, 
there's things called COPS, uh, certificates of participation, other types of collateral paper that are short term. Uh, there's ways to get around it, but it's short term. And usually you do need to have some kind of a special reserve or some dedicated funding source. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard her saying, in effect, between the lines, that she's looking for a backup for the loan. And that's the ad valorem for credit purposes. Right. Yeah. You can't yeah. pledge it. But, I but suppose you could, there's a general obligation without right. that, which leads you to the taxpayer. But you could pledge, pledge the uh, franchise tax yes. money instead of yes. the ad valorem. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why it. That's not going to get you money in the general fund. To loan, you could. You oh, could the franchise. franchise tax, yeah. You could, yeah. you could right. pledge the, the gotcha. revenue from the franchise, franchise tax, tax to pay right. the right. whatever it is for the loan. Correct. Right. It's the it's restriction on ad valorem that Correct. the Florida right. And you don't have to prohibits. vote on it if you do it either, right? From the community. Voters do not need to go to referendum. Correct. Right. So if you're if you need to do it quickly, that's probably the best avenue to take if you want to borrow. Correct? Right, and that will be approximately fifty thousand dollars to get it approved. Isn't that was the originating cost? She said in that thing. In that scenario. So yes. it would cost fifty thousand dollars plus the loan and plus the payment. Plus the interest. Plus the interest. <laughs> well, my view would be withdraw the motion. I think we've had the conversation. It's obviously where it's going. We're not just here to create records of votes on the, on on taxes. Uh, the motion was made by Council yeah. Member and seconded by Councilman DeWitt. Did I make the motion? Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. did. Okay. So uh, I'm not withdrawing it. You're not right. withdrawing it? No. Okay. I mean, I mean, we should vote on it. I mean, it's fine. All right. Okay. There's been a motion and a uh, second. Is there further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilman McCarr? No. Mayor Simmons? No. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? No. Councilman Forbes? No. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Fails three, four. Okay, great. Thank you. Public comment. Ar Audrey, did you have anything else at this time? Uh, no, that, um, that's it for the ordinances um, at this time. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Dynamite. Public comment? Members of the public that would like to speak? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to the city attorney's report. And I'm pleased to say I did not have a report to you today, but I do want to say thank you for the uh, pleasure of providing services to you. I've enjoyed it. I uh, enjoyed working at the city, and I know that there is brevity of time tonight for many of you, so I will not speak um, a lot. I just want to again express my gratitude. Absolutely, Audrey. Thank you very much. And I'm going to take this time, if I may have you come up if you would mm -hmm. maybe maybe we all should go down yes. absolutely yeah maybe I'll leave it in the box but yeah <laughs> <laughs> right 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 and this um, you can't see it, but you'll see it in a minute. On behalf of uh, Audrey E. Vance, in appreciation of your 18 years of service to the city of Bonita Springs and in recognition of over 30 years of public service to Southwest Florida, 2000 to 2018. You. We love you. you. <laughs> Sorry, bless you. I want to thank all of council, uh, of course, staff, uh, members of the public. I've enjoyed my work, enjoyed my services, and thanks. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you very much. <laughs> you got pictures. Did you get a picture? Yeah, I got a picture. I'm part of the new duties. Yeah, They might have been out of focus. And, uh, <laughs> Okay, city manager's report. <laughs> Um, good evening. Um, the first item we have is to look at the adoption and establishment of the Charter Review Committee. Um, some of the questions I received, I just wanted to give you all an update, is at the next meeting is when we'll be looking for an appointment of citizens to that committee. At previous councils, 
Um, each of the council members brought forth names to be appointed and confirmed by the mayor. Um, additionally, it's not requirement that, that the name you bring forward be a resident of your district. That's completely up to the council to bring those suggestions forward. Um, in the past, we've had seven members and two alternates um, as well. And um, we have also provided a schedule of uh, potential schedule of those meetings moving forward as well. Well, uh, you said it does not have to be a member of your district? Correct. Okay. In the past, names were brought forward and they didn't necessarily have to be a resident of their district of the name they brought forward as a recommendation from that individual council member. Okay. How, how was the chairman selected in the past? I think it was the confirmation of the mayor in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Right, the mayor, mayor selects mayor the chair. Mayor picked it. The mayor should, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Do we have a size recommendation or anything like that? or? In the past, it's been seven members. Seven members. Two alternates. And, and, two, so. alternates. Mm -hmm. and two alternates. Right. And the alternates serve in a rotational. So uh, if I may, only because I've had experience with the prior charter review, uh, they would appoint a certain amount of members, and then they uh, set up a two alternate. So if somebody dropped out during that time, the alternate would then become a voting member. Mm -hmm. And that way, they already <coughs> had the priority. It already set up the system. Uh, you would not need to go and reappoint people as people change until you've exhausted your two or depleted your two mm -hmm. alternates. And I haven't had that. Ex I, we did not have that experience, um, but we did have where some people left. And so you would name one person alternate one with the seniority ranking, then alternate two. Now, because these alternates could conceivably vote on issues um, more likely than not, um, the uh, resolution is clear that uh, they cannot talk to members of the board because there is the foreseeability that they could become voting okay. members. Mm -hmm. So because of that foreseeability, uh, you, it was clear in here, or should be clear in here, that it would be a sunshine law violation if they did speak to them. But they can, of course, talk to city council members individually, just like you can talk to any other advisory board members individually. And just clarify, because I haven't been through this, but could they, ju they just look at the charter and then they just make up their mind if they want to change anything? Or is there any guidelines? Uh, council can give guidelines. Mm -hmm. Council can give suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, mm -hmm. one of the things that is a pet peeve of mine, I have a couple pet peeves um, from a practical standpoint. One of the uh, pet peeves I have in the charter is that the city clerk, after city council adopts an ordinance, has a an additional advertisement requirement that doesn't say when they have to do the advertisement but when we adopt an ordinance we have an extra one to me that's a waste of money I mean we advertise that people could have been here public and it there's no time frame so whether or not they have a right to sue within a time period it, it doesn't even make it's not like permitting mm -hmm. I don't know why they put that in mm -hmm. another one that I was gonna let Derek know again it's my pet peeve is that when we repeal an ordinance, we can't repeal it by reference. We're supposed to put it out in full. So sometimes, for example, when you're talking Arts and Public Places Board, um, if we repeal that ordinance, yeah. I could normally have a one-page repealer. Instead, I put the entire ordinance document with a crosshatch, as if anybody is really going to read that. So it's a waste of paper. It's a, you know, it's mm -hmm. if it made better transparency, I get it, mm -hmm. but I don't think it makes better transparency. But those are issues um, I find as they're more pet peeves, whether citizens really want it or not would be a whole other issue. There's another issue I've talked to council in the past that is unconstitutional, blatantly unconstitutional. Never a fan of having it in there, but the voters love it, so I don't talk against it. But uh, you can read Buckley v. Vallejo if you want to know the issue. Um, and I can talk about it if you do want. Um, and I did send a memo out to uh, the city manager and I copied city council the other day. There was a voting district issue. And I want to remind you, this is a, a, a multi-step process. This is the charter review, but it does interplay with redistricting because as council member Karumba pointed out, they can change the entire form of government. So that you could go from a city manager, uh, city council forum, uh, where you each are voted in per district, we could have a citywide. Uh, that could be something the voters decide they want to do by referendum. Um, you could have a strong mayor situation. Not that you're not strong, but 
um, but a strong mayor strong mm -hmm. type political <laughs> system. Uh, yeah, it says so well, no, but it's a non-city right. manager form of government. Right. Exactly. Correct. So, I mean, there are things that could be done by a charter review committee. Now, the charter review committee will review the charter and make the recommendations. It's up to city council at that point to decide whether or not you wish to put it on the referendum. They're making a recommendation. You make the final decision. Mm -hmm. It's a little different than a petition initiative, mm -hmm. which is where a group of citizens, that's another way to amend the charter, where a, the group of citizens actually go forward, make the change to the document, and their, you, your job is more ministerial. If they got the vote, so, you know, people signing the petition, you have to put it on, and city attorneys have to fix, the ord fix it so that it meets the intent of that initiative. So, well, just to I didn't quite understand number two on this, um, the one that you sent from the charter review redistricting with the with the time the timing on the bottom on number two. So they vote in 2022. That is, if they redistrict, there could be a problem with the 2024 election. Is that what you're saying there? So what I'm saying is, um, so you're talking about the memorandum. Yeah, the memorandum what's in front of you here, yeah. here tonight. And so what the memorandum pointed out, it was a petition initiative, mm -hmm. not a charter review. Uh, I sent the case to you be, um, mm -hmm. for a couple reasons, but the reason I, you know, is to remember to do redistricting. It is a charter requirement oh, okay. that council redistricts every 10 year after the, the decennial census. Now, it's, you would think because it's the decennial census, you'd have it done in 2020. but. It takes them about a year to get the results, and then it takes you a while. Um, Derek will prepare resolutions and work with staff on the redistricting uh, to make sure you follow the principles of redistricting, which, again, if you read the case, there has been uh, substantive changes. And, again, we're not under a clearance order, so you can do whatever you – or the voters can do whatever they want on that. But you can – I mean, you could redistrict it um, pretty much – as long as you keep the populations about the same in each one, you have a lot of discretion how you want to draw that border. And I'm sorry, I have all these questions, I'm sorry, okay. but one is, can we ask to have some public input to the charter? I mean, could we, when we get sent up? We yes. Say, you, so okay. if you look at the meetings. timeline, yeah. uh, the, their meetings are public, first of all, oh. and the uh, timeline on the second page, um, the Charter Review Committee holds public hearings no different than um, City Council holds public hearings or the LPA mm -hmm. or the Zoning Board hold public hearings. So they can hold a public hearing and uh, they might, you know, do mm -hmm. outreaches in the beginning to try to find out what are, you know, hearing Audrey pet peeves, they might, I, I can hear uh, Jackie McCurdy was the former chairperson and Jackie's like, Audrey, we don't care about that issue. And, you know, it didn't go to a referendum because to them it was more a pet peeve issue then it, the, it wasn't a very costly thing. It was, you know, I guess the cost mm -hmm. of paper and advertising, more to me, not in the overall scheme of things. But, um, you know, that would be something that could be said. Staff will give their recommendations if they have any, but uh, for the most part, it's citizen, you know, there'll be people coming from taxpayer groups that may have positions that they want uh, city council to be more fiscally uh, limited. Uh, that's not atypical during a charter review. Public comment will be built into these agendas as okay. well, and then several times as well into mm -hmm. the meeting. And, and then ultimately it goes to city council, city council. And just one more, I have a lot of opinion on this, I'm sorry. And then finally, could we direct them <laughs> to only have one issue for each recommendation <laughs> and not have multiple things under? So yes, you, you know, can because the state the, the right. state has multiple things that we're supposed to vote on. Oh, single subject rule. Yeah, so, single su subject rule. Can we direct them to only do single subject? So we are obligated under the Florida Constitution. Mm -hmm. I never understood that about the legislature, but that's the same thing like the Sunshine Law. Mm -hmm. I don't understand with the legislature. Uh, there's already the requirement that any referendum question meet single subject. Okay, but for the con for the Florida Constitution, it did not. I don't apply. understand how they were okay. able to bundle it. But All right, so uh, we're, we're covered there. All right, good. Thank you. Yeah, unless Derek feels differently and you'll have different advice, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. 
Mayor, I just want to remind council, this is not a permanent committee as well. There is a, a appropriation in the term of members where it expires once their final recommendations are provided to you. Mm -hmm. And that releases them from the sunshine law mm -hmm. as well. And additionally, <clears throat> for the meeting, you also might, for the next meeting, you also might want to consider a council member liaison to the committee as well. Council, Fred, you look like you might have a question. Well, yeah, I want to make sure of one thing. Once they make their recommendations and we go through them, we do have the right to amend their recommendation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and they could also provide you <coughs> recommendations in the alternative. For example, they might uh, make suggestions. Um, I don't want to create one, but they might have suggestion A or suggestion B, like suggestion A might be get rid of this section altogether, section B amend it so it's increased or higher number. And you can read your Buckley versus Vallejo to know which one I'm talking about, or Citizens United, or any of the others. Okay, Council. Sounds like a fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we we would be looking for confirmation of this resolution. This okay. okay. Motion to accept. So moved. So moved. Okay. Further discussion. Roll call, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I one didn't... minor change. Um, there is a typo. Uh, Section 4C. It should be no later than 180 days. I had 108 days. Oh. So it's like bad check writing. I need to just make the correction on that. Okay. Motion to accept with the edit of 180 days as opposed to 108 days, and it's been seconded. Uh, further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Carr? Yes. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilman Karumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Okay, great, thanks. Arlene. Um, the next item before you is to review um, and provide direction on the letter of engagement with Gray Robinson Law Firm for the services, <coughs> for legal services for the city. Um, I have had uh, several conversations with Derek as well. Um, he brought back, uh, the, the intention of council was to look at the fact of retaining the additional uh, legal staff that we have. We've looked at an opportunity for um, the assistant uh, city attorney to become a staff attorney and assist us with other administrative duties as well, major projects we have going on, and additionally half of our time will be spent um, under the direction of um, Gray Robinson. And secondly, we would keep um, our legal assistant and they would be coordinating efforts with the outsource attorney as well as other um, administrative duties that we have that we needed to address. The amount was reduced by $50,000. Um, and staff is looking to, uh, in, in reading all the materials looking through, staff would recommend should you move forward to option C, which looks at the retainer of um, $300,000, but there's a co potential cost savings depending on the u utilization of the attorney. And mm -hmm. Derek can go into further details on that if you if you like. He's also here to answer Yeah, I was just going to say, but, you know, so for discussion, I guess, right, like anything, and I just wanted to make, you know, because... Last time I had some questions for you, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to make clear that in no way were those questions towards the committee, that's Pat Colley uh, or any of those gentlemen, Bernie Long or Larry Curlander. So that was just you and I having a discussion. I just wanted to and, and make that certainly clear. That, that clearing the air on that issue. Sure. No, absolutely. So um, in terms of what Arlene just kind of outlined here for these options, mm -hmm. can you kind of walk us through them or what, what your thought process uh, is, well, please? The two options were a, a fixed fee, which would be we reduced it from three hundred fifty thousand to three hundred thousand dollars, and that would be all inclusive with the exception of litigation. Now that would guarantee the city uh, savings over the current budget. Um, however, we felt that if we could go to the incentive structure where both the firm and the city are, are incentivized to be effic as efficient as possible then we think there could be additional savings and whatever those savings are, we would remit 70% of that back to the city. The idea being that my firm can boost its hourly rate by being efficient as quick, as good with time as possible. And I'm very confident that we are gonna come in under that $300,000 figure. Okay. I don't have any other questions. I just wanted Sounds to hear good. the logic. Okay. Now, in, in, in discussing with uh, Carly, I think that uh, we sat down, we went through what she does on a daily basis. There's a lot of routine matters that she can cover, and then there's some other areas that we're gonna focus together on, on how we'll share that work, but 
having her split with Arlene and, and using for uh, utilizing for other services, we thought that there can be some additional savings. All right, that's really it. Okay, Council, what's your pleasure? So moved. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you all in October. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, I guess item C now, yes, Arlene. Item C, and I do have another item after this, but sure. I, so uh, this was a reminder that our downtown Bonita Springs introduction to form-based code is Tuesday, September 25th from 5.30 to 7. Um, DPZ will also be here a little bit earlier in the day, and I wanted to reiterate, we, we have moved forward with the change order as approved by council to look at potential um, development opportunities on the bamboo lot as well as the 11 lot. That will be part of some of the discussions. And they'll also be getting some, they'll be taking public feedback during the workshop on any thoughts as well during about that process. Okay. That'll be here? Yes, that will be here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, council, any other questions or? Okay. That was just a reminder. And yeah. the, the last time I had is um, Mayor Simmons has been receiving correspondence from Mosaic and they've been addressing a concern regarding their impact fees. Um, they did start the process in 2016, um, looking forward to uh, moving into downtown and working through their processes. Um, since that time, study, land, uh, impact fee studies had changed between Lee County as well as updates that we've received. Um, and I think they've uh, provided the mayor with a number of approximately 600,000, which was a difference, indifference of what they anticipated to originally pay. Um, the school impact fee process has already moved forward and that's not something that the city council has any authority or ability to, to look into further. We have an administrative process that would allow them to uh, hire a traffic engineer to do an independent fee calculation and we've done this with several other projects as well. Um, so what they are asking is if there's an opportunity for them to move forward so that their building permits are not any further delayed um, to be able to pay the original amount that they were thinking when they started their process in 2016, which is approximately $1,271,000, um, up front now to be able to get their building permits. And I believe uh, our city attorney will say that we would need to bring back some sort of formal contract for that at the October 3rd meeting allowing a little bit of delay and then so they could move forward they could pull their building permits and then uh, in essence we could work forward through a process to determine if if there is any fee reduction in that impact fees they could work through that um, if they move th forward through that process and the independent fee calculation is not where they think it is they might be asking <laughs> council for further direction but that's not at this step right now and I'll ask John if he had anything else he wanted to add to that as well so they're asking to use the old numbers for the impact fees? Just temporarily so they can Until they because there's a re they cannot the they cannot get their building permit fees unless they pay their impact fees. Correct. The impact fees are due at time of building permit pickup. They're look they're getting close to the point where their development order will be approved, which means their building permits which have already been reviewed will be issued and that payment will be due. Um, they have had an interesting time with this property in terms of uh, fits and starts and entitlements, but they have been active in applications since their zoning. And at this point, they have made contact uh, because they've been focused on construction and have not focused on uh, what the impact fee rates were and had simply looked at a, a memo or a letter that was written back in, I believe it was 2014. Uh, 2000. September of 2014 was the original. Correct. But it was clearly stated by staff that that this was what it was at the time. But as, as if anything were to change, they would be subject to the new rates. And they, they understand that. Oh, okay. So we're, we're in a position now that they've been focusing on other things. Now that they have, are ready to write a check, they have looked at impact fees and have realized and, that the rate has increased. And to clarify, this is only for road impact fees that we would be discussing this. The rest would be the park impact fees and the other jurisdictions that we don't have authority over, they have to pay up front. So you're looking for, sorry, Mike. Uh, well, I was just going to say, didn't we defer 
implementation of the new fees? So stage over three years. The, the fees that were given to you by the city manager, or th what she was talking about, are current rates. The fees that we have adopted but do not go into effect into November. So uh, they would not be directly impacting this project. So I can give you basically they are they were under the. Uh, the original letter of in September of 2014 was the $1,271,902. If they currently, without our new impact fee rate in schedule, based on the updates provided by Lee County, currently they would owe $1,669,668. Once the new impact fees go into effect in November, which hopefully this would be resolved before then, they would be at $1,829,919, and that's with the 30% That is reduction. the 30% reduction. Lee reduction. County's change changed our impact fees then? No, Lee County has changed their, the <laughs> situation. Previously, we had not updated our impact fees for a long duration. And as an independent study, some people were simply providing the data and analysis that was adopted by Lee County because it was much more recent than what we had adopted. So when we reference the Lee County studies, it's not because their impact fees influence ours. It's simply because people were using that data and analysis to justify our lower fee because our, our data at that time was more dated. So their lower fee was based on the Lee County. That was the more lower. recent localized data. Remember, the statute requires that when you charge impact fees, you use the most recent and localized data. Staff was using data from Lee County that people would use to justify a request for a reduction. Well, that would be submitted as the justification for right. the reduction. Yes. I have a question. Um, if we mm. go, I'm a little confused. Oh, I'm, I'm not trying to solve this. I'm not 100% following what you said, but I have another follow-up question. It, should they have this independent evaluation and it was more in line with the higher numbers, do we need some kind of procedure so we could then so, get the payment? How do we do it? So we're asking for 60 days and that would be part of an extension that would be brought to you. There would need to be an agreement brought to you in October So 3rd. then how can you require them to pay them after 60 days? I'll give them a CO. We, so correct. you would withhold the CO? Is that ba how you would do that? Basically, we would stop construction on the site. Mm -hmm. you, you could also ask your uh, It's not an option that we would look to do, especially once they get started, but it is effective. Okay. Like anything else, if you don't pay your permit fees or your impact fees, you just don't issue the CO at the end of it all. Mm -hmm. cool. So all correct. Correct. We, check bounces, them, we right. would look to stop things earlier than that uh -huh. because you're right. You don't want mm -hmm. completed buildings mm -hmm. only to state that you're not going to issue the, the CO. You like to stop things much earlier in the process. Right. So you're not looking for us to solve this tonight. You're just Correct. looking for us to say you understand they're going to pay the original amount and then you're going to discuss with them for 60 days what the new amount exactly. is. Exactly. Okay. So they get the building permits Do you need today. a motion for that? If you all are comfortable with that general direction of that's how we're moving forward, if uh, need be, we'll check with Derek and Audrey and we might need to bring an agreement to you in the next meeting. Okay. But we didn't want to continue the conversation with Mosaic if that wasn't comfortable. It sounds council. good to me. It sounds good. Yeah. Yep. good. And unfortunately, the, we were short on time, and so then this was really the only way to. Uh -huh. okay. So we, we will have an agreement. We will go with the direction of Derek on what we bring back for October 3rd so that we can move through the process. Okay. Right. Good. Thank you. Anything else? Matt? No, nothing. Thank you. Okay. Dynamite. Okay. Uh, mayor and council reports. We'll start. Amy? Um, I just want to make two comments. First of all, I want to um, mention the uh, Patriot's Day celebration, which I thought was very good, and I appreciate the comments that were made by the mayor, recognizing not only the contribution for the uniform staff, but taking recognition of the day of September 11th. And for those of us who went through that time uh, living in the tri-state area, it means a lot to us. So I personally was affected by the comments, and I appreciate it. And I uh, thank everyone that came out to s support our first responders and, and recognizing um, the loss that we had to our nation. So I thought it was a really a great uh, time, uh, a, a good ceremony. Um, and then I also at this time, again, talking about hard things is that <coughs> like most of you, I've been watching what's happening with Florence and, and the effect it's had on the Carolinas. And it, not only am I sympathetic to the plight of those people, but it, 
came back to remind us of, the, of what we went through just a, a year or more and a little bit ago. And when I see that those people being flooded out, I recognize the plight that our own people went through with their own flooding. So not only are we soulmates with, those, with the residents of Carolina who are suffering, but um, you know, we're, we're all together. We all send our support and help and uh, we'll go, they'll, they'll survive it the way we survived it, even though we're still struggling a year later. So uh, I just wanted to mention that. Great. Thank you very much, Amy. Greg? I just wanted to thank staff and everybody for, uh, for the Patriots Day September 11th uh, presentation. It was very good. And uh, the kind words that the mayor had to say. But mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Laura? Same. Uh, I, too, was in the New York area. And um, just for somebody to remember years later and to make it official for our city, it's very mm -hmm. important. And it was lovely to see so many people there supporting. And it was a rainy nasty day and people came out so thank you everyone thank you Laura Pete um, I just want to say a word about Audrey um, I've told her this many times but I've been an attorney for 40 years and I've never I've literally never seen someone work as hard as Audrey has uh, during the time I've been on council and frankly before that as well um, I also uh, I want to repeat something I said to her before, which is I'm in awe of somebody who literally is practicing in front of cameras all the time. Not something that's typical for a lawyer and very hard to do. So thank you, Audrey. Thank you. I just want to say that when I'm actually providing legal advice, I forget the cameras there. <laughs> okay. But you notice that if there's anything where you're talking about me, I can't <laughs> open my mouth. <laughs> so. now, unfortunately, I'm going to be out at the day of your party, so I'm going to miss that. Mike? Uh, no, I just also want to say thank you to Audrey for your years of service and good luck with your future. And um, Sorry I couldn't make it to the <coughs> Patriots Day. Um, I had to help a friend out with a, mm -hmm. with a flat. But uh, otherwise I'm good. Thank you. Fred? Yeah, I just want to thank Audrey for the time I've had the privilege to uh, work with her on different things. She's uh, always uh, come through with opinions, some of them didn't uh, make me happy, but uh, that's life in the, as being the city attorney. So I uh, wish her well on her retirement. And uh, the, I think uh, a lot of big things going on in Bonita, and, and I think we really do need to keep, keep the momentum going. We don't want to slow it down. Thank you. Okay. And I also want to uh, reiterate the 9-11 service was, was beautiful for everybody involved and the first responders and the folks that were there and obviously the folks that weren't there and, and gave their life on that day. And Audrey, Godspeed. You know, you and I have had some discussions over the years, more than one. But I'll tell you something, at the end of the day, we always respected each other and respectfully disagree, right? We can disagree without being disagreeable which isn't always easy sometimes, as, as we all know. But thank you very much for your service. God bless you with whatever you're going to do next. And honestly, hats off to you, Audrey. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, approval of the minutes. So move. So move, second. Okay, and that is for those keeping track for September 5th uh, and for the September 5th budget. Um, further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Okay, public comment. Members of the public that would wish to speak? i seeing none. Okay, motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Excellent. Thanks,